In this episode of Real Chemistry, we're going to talk about significant figures and calculations again. This time we're going to combine the rules that we've already learned for multiplication and division with the rules we've learned for addition and subtraction. So the, what we're going to do here is we're going to do problems that involve both multiplication and division or addition and subtraction. If you haven't yet watched my videos on counting significant figures or on significant figures and calculations part one, go ahead and do that before continuing. The very first thing you want to think about when you're doing problems that mix these operations is which order should I do them in? And that's what order of operations tells us. So orders of operations you may have studied in another math class and it just tells you what to do first. And the standard order of operations goes parentheses first, then anything in an exponent, then you multiply and divide, and then you add and subtract. So that's just the order you do all those different operations in. So if we look at the math problem we have, we're gonna do this multiplication before we do this addition, because multiplication comes higher in the order of operations. We notice multiplication's right here, whereas addition's right there. An easy way to remember this uh, order of operations is either PEMDAS, which is the acronym for it, or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, which also can help you remember that. All right, so let's go ahead and do this first problem. So the first thing we wanna do, step one of this process says, follow order of operations. And what we wanna do is we wanna multiply 4.52 times 151 because that multiplication comes first. And what that's gonna give us when we do that in our calculator is 682.52. And then we're just gonna go ahead and rewrite that 124 0.320. Okay, so that was step one. Step two says apply the correct rule. What's the correct rule? Well, in this case, we did multiplication, right? So we want to follow the multiplication division rule, which says keep the fewest sig figs. So again, we go count how many sig figs went into that calculation. Our two numbers we multiplied are this guy, which has one, two, three sig figs, and this one, which has one, two, three sig figs. That means our answer should have three sig figs. But here's the trick. We're not going to round yet. We're just going to mark the significant figures, those digits that quote count, but we're not going to round. The reason is, is if you round now and you round at subsequent steps of the problem, you're going to round over and over and over again, and our, your answer is going to get farther and farther away from correct. So to avoid rounding there, we only round once at the very end. And now all we're going to do is mark what digits are significant, but we're not going to round. So since I should have three sig figs and 682, I'm going to mark the first three significant digits. So the six, eight, and the two count. In future parts of the problem, when we say how many sig figs does 682 have, we're gonna say three. And when we ask how many decimals does it have, we're gonna say zero. That might be a little tricky. But the issue here is that only the six, eight, and two count. If we were to round this number now, it would be 683 with no decimal points. So when I do addition and subtraction, as I'm going to do next, I'm gonna count this number as if it had zero decimal places or zero numbers past the decimal. So. I've marked those numbers that count, that's step three. Something a little different about these steps is we're just gonna repeat them over and over again until we're done with our problem. So now we just kinda go back to the top. And so we're gonna follow order of operations again, and that just tells us to add those two numbers together. And so if I plug that into my calculator and I add them together, I'm gonna get 806.84. And now I wanna apply the correct rule because I'm gonna go ahead and do step two again. In this case, I'm adding. So what rule do I wanna follow? The addition subtraction rule, which says keep the fewest number of decimals. Remember that if I look above at those two numbers, that 682 has zero decimals. So I'm just gonna mark that down. This number actually has zero decimals. And 124.320 has three decimals, three numbers past the decimals. So how many decimals should I keep in my final answer? Zero, because that's the fewest number of decimals from either of those inputs. So I'm gonna round this number now to get my final answer. And I'm gonna get rid of both of these decimal places because my final answer should have zero decimals. And I'm gonna get 807 because that 0.8 rounds the six up. So that's my final answer. That's how we combine the addition and subtraction rules and the multiplication and division rules. Let's do a few more examples so you can get those rules down pat. So here we have a problem that says 4.03 divided by 0.254. And then we're gonna divide that all by this subtraction problem. Now, without even realizing it, you probably follow this rule, but it turns out whenever you see a number on the top and bottom of a line like that, that really there's implied parentheses there. So even though we don't have parentheses explicitly written, it's important to remember that there's actually parentheses 
around those numbers on the top and the bottom of the fraction on the numerator and denominator. So when we go to our step one, which says follow order of operations, we're going to need to go ahead and do those things in parentheses first, which means we need to resolve what's up top and what's on the bottom. And it doesn't matter which order we do them in. So I'm just going to go ahead and resolve the top part of that fraction first. I'm going to write this line, and we're just going to write the answer we get for the top part, and then we'll do the calculation and write the answer we get for the bottom part. So if I do 4.03 divided by 0.254 in my calculator, what that gives me is 15.86614. And now actually there's even more digits in my calculator that it spit out. I'm just going to keep those there and I'm going to use them in the next step of the problem when I do division. It's always a good idea to keep all the decimals that your calculator spits out in your calculator. And that way you avoid round off error. Your answer won't get farther and farther away from correct each time you do a calculation. Okay, so I've, I've just divided what was on top. And I want to apply the correct rule. So the correct rule in this case is for multiplication and division, because that's what I've just done. I've divided. And so I apply the correct rule, and I look at the top, and I see that four, that four number has three sig figs. One, two, three. And I see that the 0.254 also has three sig figs. One, two, three. So that means my answer should have three sig figs. Again, I'm not going to round. I'm just going to mark the digits that count. And the digits that count are one, five, and eight. So even though I wrote a bunch of numbers there, that number has three sig figs and one decimal. Now I'm going to resolve what's on the bottom. And when I do that subtraction problem, I'm going to get out minus 253.1. Again, that is following the order of operations. That's basically doing step one again. And then I want to apply the correct rule. In this case, I've subtracted. So the correct rule is the addition subtraction rule, which says keep the fewest number of decimals. You'll notice that here in 121 that I put into this calculation, this one is a decimal place and this two is a decimal place. So they both have one number past the decimal. So show should my answer. And in fact, it already does. But I'm just going to go ahead and mark that in the same way. My calculator didn't give me any other digits. That's the exact answer to that problem. And it has four sig figs or one decimal. Okay, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead back to the top of that list and I'm going to follow order of operations. I only have one thing left to do and that's a division problem. So I'm going to go ahead and divide. And when I do divide, I'm going to get negative 0 0.0626. Seven, two, a bunch of digits. And I'm going to write out that full answer. And now I'm going to round. And I just did multiplication division. So that's the rule I got to follow. So I should keep the fewest sig figs. And in this case, the number up top, 15.8, had three sig figs. And the number on the bottom had four sig figs. So I want to keep the fewest, which is three. So I'm going to round this guy to three sig figs, which is going to be these three guys. And that eight, remember, rounds my six up. So when I round that, I'm going to get negative 0 0.0627, and that's my final answer. So now we have two practice examples where we combine these operations. We're going to do one more. This one has, those same, has that same dividing line. And remember, whenever we see that line that separates what's up top and what's on the bottom, it's like there's parentheses here. And so that's what we have to do first. So always remember when you see a set of operations above a line and below a line that each set of those guys has a parentheses around them. So we're going to do step one, which says follow of order, op order of operations. And the first thing we're going to do is parentheses. So I'm going to resolve the top first. And again, I'm going to do the same thing where I draw a line and just resolve what's up top and write that down and then resolve what's up on the bottom and write that down. Let's make that line a little straighter. And when I do 15 plus 12.75, that's going to give me 27.75. Now I just added, so I need to follow the rules for addition. The rules for addition, remember, say keep the fewest number of decimal points. And so you'll see 15 has zero decimal points. 12.75 has two. So I have zero decimal points here, two there. So I'm going to keep the fewest, which is zero. So I'm just going to mark the ones that count again. Only the two and the seven are going to count as significant. That number now should be considered to have zero numbers past the decimal and two significant figures. But I don't round yet, remember. Only at the end. 
Now I'm going to resolve what's on the bottom of that fraction. I'm going to do 3.74 minus 1.2. And when I put that in my calculator, what I get out is 2.54. That was subtraction, so I follow the addition subtraction rule, which is keep the fewest number of decimals. 3.74 has two decimals. And 1.2 has one decimal. So I need to keep that one decimal. So I'm going to mark that with a line, my two counts, and my five counts. My four doesn't, because that would be rounded off if this was the end of the problem. It's just not. Last thing I do, once again, follow order of operations. Only one operation left, division. That big line means division. So I do 27.75 divided by 2.54. And what that gives me when I plug that into my calculator is 2.925. Finally, I want to round that to the correct number of sig figs. You'll notice that the two numbers above that I just divided both have two sig figs. There's lines marking the sig figs, and there's just two in each case. So I'm going to round that guy to two sig figs. And when I do that, I'm going to get 11. So that's my final answer. All right, in this video, we've talked about how to combine the multiplication and division rule with the addition and subtraction rule. If there's any questions you have, please ask them below. Please visit my channel to see other videos I've made or subscribe to receive updates.